Welcome everybody to another Hillcrest Online Cafe. Today I have some really special guests. Uh, it was many years ago, a little over 20 years ago in fact, that I got to be the best man at the wedding for both Jason and Donna uh, McClellan. And they are really good lifetime uh, eternal friends in Christ uh, because once we get to heaven we'll actually have more time to hang out. Uh, they have had some amazing uh, things happen in their life. Uh, and about a little over a year ago, um, something drastic had happened in their family. But before we get to that, I'd just like to help you guys get to know them a little bit like I do. Jason, Donna, say hi and tell us a little bit about yourselves. Hi. <laughs> hi. Um, well, uh, obviously, I'm the Jason part of Jason and Donna. And... Uh, uh, a little bit about us. Uh, I grew up in the Truro area of Nova Scotia, and I still live around here. Um, met Andrew 25, 26 years ago, and uh, yeah, I know, don't we look good? Looking good, brother. <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a freight relocator specialist, otherwise known as a truck driver, so... That's uh, what I do to make a few bucks, and uh, I'll turn it over to you. I'm Donna, and I grew up in the Toronto area too, and I met Jason a few months before I met Andrew, um, and they were young, interesting men with mullets. <laughs> I, I seen a mullet the other day, and I was like, oh dear, here we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I became a Christian at 16, and uh, it's been uh, an interesting ride some of the years since then. Uh, it's been good and bad, up and down, and life goes. Our Christian walks are like that sometimes. <laughs> Just like our hairstyles. Mullets are in, yeah. then they're out. <laughs> <laughs> they're not coming back. <laughs> Now you guys have some neat hobbies. Uh, Jason, you just started a new hobby this last while. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, like I said, I was a truck driver, and I did long haul for close to 20 years, and uh, I do local now, but uh, I've always wanted to work with wood, and I haven't since junior high, and I had a need due to my other hobby, which... I have a love of music, which has now turned into a quest for the perfect sound. And I bought a set of speakers, and the stands that I had weren't good enough. They weren't they weren't the right height. I'll put it that way. So long, long story short, it'd be about four to five hundred dollars to buy them. And I said, well, what if I just made them and uh, kind of followed a recipe to make it so that the speaker would get the maximum uh, output and I enjoyed it so much that I decided that uh, I kind of want to jump into that and and uh, pursue it as a, as, a, as a hobby as well as my audiophile hobby. Awesome. So it kind of went hand in hand. And Donna, I know you've got, a, I, I'm so proud of you, so I always bring this up. You used to be a volunteer firefighter. Uh, you had all sorts of cool training and stuff, but now you have an even more dangerous uh, hobby uh, pastime. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that? So now I'm a beekeeper. <laughs> and, uh, I've gone from one hive to five hives within a few months. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're blessed and can't help it. Loaves and fishes. <laughs> wow. I don't, my neighbor's a beekeeper, and that doesn't just happen. <laughs> That's amazing. It, it, it can. It can. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I enjoyed my volunteer firework. Um, I enjoyed serving people, and it was really neat to meet people in the community, and uh, you see them at their best, and you see them at their worst. And um, it was really neat to make those connections and those friends um some things will always live with me and uh, some of the things i said saw did um and some of the uh memories um are very good but it was a real way to serve people um in our community at that time when um 
The church we were there was active, but um, the serving part wasn't. Um, so that really meant, and then when I had kids and hobbies and interests change, and you can't leave a two-year-old and a four-year-old to go to a fire call. <laughs> you yeah. just can't do it. <laughs> so uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, something quite dramatic happened to your family um, and your home. Do you mind sharing a bit about what happened about a year ago? Yeah, um, I just got the nudge. So my side of the story, uh, I was uh, attending a Celebrate Recovery group in uh, New Glasgow at a church we attended there, and the people were very supportive of, of me. I, I went through a severe addiction with alcohol and so because we live over here now i just wanted to go over and like every couple of months and you know just take part and uh I, the meeting had was done and i went i was on my way home went to walmart to just check things out because they have a nicer walmart than we do i get a phone call that the house is on fire christopher's inside and i've called the fire department and Donna hung up, and that was all I got. And uh, how how old is Christopher, and how many kids do you guys have? Or how old was he at the time? He was seven. Yeah, seven. So he's eight now. Yeah, and we got three kids. Three kids, and where were the other two kids at? Or am I interrupting your story, and I should just let you talk? <laughs> One was at a friend's and the other one was at, at, at a youth group. And Christopher was gone to bed. So th that's kind of the backstory. And uh, like, uh, as where the other two were. And uh, I was, I was uh, 45, 50 minutes away. But when I got that call, the we, we often hear the term, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And um, everybody asked me, well, what was it like? And I was like, I don't know. You can't understand it. And you just know that no matter what happens, it's, it's, it reminds me a lot of, of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at the fiery furnace when they said, said uh, we will not bow down even if you throw us in the fire we will still not bow down and uh, that was kind of that's the closest thing i can think of in scripture uh that's tangible that a lot of people might understand and relate to but the the peace that i felt it was just amazing i mean you can't put it into words it's, it is beyond understanding but even even now it's it's still very much a part of everyday life for me and hmm. that just made it um so real like i I've, I've i've experienced it before and and i think um just trusting in god and and, and being resolute that when that moment happened it was just a given that that would take place for me and and i like i say Again, I can't understand it. I don't understand it. I just accept it. Wow. So you get this phone call. Donna, what was it like on your end uh, discovering a fire in your home? Um, I was in complete panic. And having the volunteer firefighter training maybe made it worse. I, I don't know if that was a real hindrance or a blessing um because i knew that i couldn't go in to rescue him you know my training kicked in and i knew that i could not attempt to rescue um but i knew how long it would be for the fire department to come so i i, I felt the peace that i knew how long those those men would be before they got here um but yeah i was in complete panic and it's still kind of fuzzy i'm still not sure of the sequence of details i was outside playing with the dog, dumping compost, you know, normal cleanup after supper. He was <laughs> in bed. I turn around and look back and there's fire coming out the windows. And, uh, you know, I just panicked. 
at that time. So Jason's in complete peace. I'm in panic, but <laughs> his peace. Thanks, God. <laughs> <laughs> his peace brings the order to the chaos. Um, so I'm um, at that point due to, um, you know, just trying to figure out where to go from there. Um, you know, like we went to the hospital, he escaped through the fire. Um, and I think he was low enough and brave enough to uh, go under the flames. And uh, he came out without a mark, a singe, barely a smell of smoke, ran down a hall full of flames. And, and just to uh, add to that, uh, it was his his bedroom where the fire started and he was asleep and um we have a friend who was a full-time firefighter and every time we visited him he would always go through fire safety with christopher and you wonder does it stick and it did because he got to the door and the handle was too hot so he grabbed something to put over the handle before he got out the door but well i don't know what woke him up because he was sleeping and uh, when he sleeps, he sometimes throw, pulls the covers over him. And I think that's a big part of why he didn't get burnt. But like there was, yeah, he didn't get burnt at all. Like, the, it, you know, it's, it's a miracle or it's God's providence, whatever it is. Uh, I tend to believe it's just God looking after him through using other people before we knew that that would be needed like that because like say he goes over and learns about fire trucks learns about fire safety and i mean we we teach it but you know we're mom and dad what do you know sort of thing you know i mean not all kids are like that but you, you tend to listen to somebody else sometimes more than your own parents like we always taught the kids you know when when you leave a, a building you will always go to our shed like that was where our our meeting spot was and I'm standing out there and I'm holding because it's it's April and it's cold and it's raining and I'm crying and he's half crying he's like well we're supposed to stand in front of the shed here mom and wait for the fire truck <laughs> I'm like it's okay buddy we're all out <laughs> we're all here <laughs> the fire truck I can see him he's coming <laughs> and all our pets survived too all your pets survived there were the pets indoor survived. Indoor cats and dogs, or? Yep. Yep, they were all inside. Or I guess Daisy was outside. She's a yeah, dog. Yeah, the dog was outside with me. Right, the cats. Right. Yeah. Wow. And it didn't bring the structure down, which was a blessing, too, because it was an old mobile home, which had been updated. And it's been about 20 years since the update. And if we had had today's technology and updates it would actually burn even worse uh due to the chemicals that are in today's products which is ironic because it's supposed to be more fire retardant but it's actually more dangerous that was the fire marshal he was astounded that we had the good old gyp rock as he put it and that's why it it smoldered and went out quick enough that not only was the structure saved but that's probably why Christopher was able to to escape is because it it didn't flash the as quickly before he got out. Wow. So most all of your kinds, work, oh what's that sorry? All kinds of miracles there. Yeah. So the aftermath, your house is burning down in front of you. Your husband's forty five minutes away. You know your girls are safe, but they're not with you. Um, God works in in this situation. Soon Jason shows up and the girls come back. How did you see God working after, in the midst of all this? What was, what was some of the ways that you saw God work both right after and then in the weeks to follow? What were some of the ways you saw God uh, taking care of you? Well, for me, I got in the car that echoed bad. I got in the car and just drove. Like, I didn't speed. 
because I knew there was nothing I could do. And then Donna called me and told me that Christopher had got it. And um, for me, that was, uh, it was still peace. Mm -hmm. Still peace. But um, at the hospital, a uh, friend from church, he showed up like three o'clock in the morning with freshly baked cookies because he heard the fire. So that was kind of cool. One of the nurses working was a good friend of ours wife. Um, no, so she was there kind of working, you know, how this was going to work out and when we would be seeing somebody, that kind of stuff. So just people we knew at three o'clock in the morning were there. <laughs> you never know who you're going to see. <laughs> when you, yeah. When you need. Here go through life and you have your friends, but then your house burns down and <laughs> then it's like, wow. Um, so where did, what happened? You end up having to stay at a hotel for a while or what, uh, what happened next when she left the hospital? We went to the hotel. Yeah, we went to the hotel. We stayed there for a month. We were there a month. It was over a month. We were there a while. A hotel room with three kids is not great. <laughs> um, it was a, an interesting time. Um, God really provided in unusual ways. Um, like people would, would give us gift cards or money um, for, um, you know, one friend would say, well, what, what can I do for you? And I'd say, just make my kids lunches for me because <laughs> I, I couldn't even get it together to make a lunch to send the kids to school that week. Um, and, and those little things mean the world to someone. Um, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you know, I need to do the big flash, but making kids lunch is huge in mm -hmm. those crises. Um, you know, someone would go out and buy backpacks and I'm like, I hadn't even thought about backpacks for the kids. Um, then another a huge blessing was um, this couple that goes to Jason's parents' church. Uh, their mother passed away, and they had given away some of her stuff, but they didn't know what to do with a lot of the household furniture and stuff. So they heard about her fire, so they offered us to come and get all of her household stuff. And she had a lot of nice things. And she had been a, a faithful Christian for all her life. And so it was really neat to see some of her writings or inspirational cards that she would have tucked away in, in her belongings. And when I was packing those and unpacking those, I felt that real peace of, of God there, that God had washed over her and her things for her to bless us, even after she was gone. Um, you know, and she would have had no idea that she was packing that card away or, um, you know, had written that verse out on that piece of paper that was tucked in her teacup. Um, so God really, that was when my piece came, when I was unpacking um, this lady's things. And we were in our house um, about a little over two months after our fire. We, we um, looked at rebuilding and restoring. And we felt that that time, the quickest and best way for our family was to buy a new house. Are new to us. New to us. Um, rebuilding was way over budget, and we didn't have the timeline or the funds to wait for new build. Uh, restoring the property was all the house was already too small for us, um, and that was going to be another huge over budget. We felt so. Uh, anyway, God uh, hid this house for us, and then He revealed it. <laughs> Which was, wow. Uh, <laughs> so how it all came you I was just going to say, and then after we'd been here for a few months, uh, there's a cemetery like 500 meters away from us. We walked down there, and the lady who had passed away that we received all her stuff, that's where she's buried. So you can't take it with you, but you can get it down the cemetery road. Right? <laughs> Besides the cemetery. <laughs> we didn't know that until we went to see the cemetery. Oh, that's kind of neat. That's kind of so neat. once again, you know, that piece that passes, 
you know, like here she's all her worldly treasures and things that she's treasured over the years have blessed a family that's close to her <laughs> in body. Yeah. You know? Beautiful. Uh, that's so neat. So, uh, I mean, I know there's probably literally hundreds of stories. I know your church family really came through for you. Um, just people in general, like uh, God really blessed you guys uh, physically with physical things because we need that. But I'm just kind of wondering in the midst of all this, what you've had some time to think back on all these things. What has God been revealing to you through this? I mean, I'm not going to say that your house burned down was God's fault because he's trying to teach you a lesson. But in the ashes situation, God always turns things to beauty. I'm just wondering, what has God uh, done in your heart through the midst of all this struggle? Uh, one of the things for me that I noticed right after um, was being the provider. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about okay, this house, that house, we're and kind of on the timeline because we're in a hotel and we stayed with my, my dad for a while. And um, I just like one foot in front of the other and doing what I knew to do. And, you know, like people say, God's plan A, God's plan B. I don't know what God's plan A or plan B was. All I knew was I needed a house for my family. And um, I think we sometimes get caught up in that, you know, God's best, God's second best. I think God just wants us to live day by day, trusting Him, and you know, not second guess yourself. I, I guess would be because there were times when I'm going, well, is this the right place? Well, it checks off a lot of our boxes, but there's some boxes that aren't checked off. Well, those are wants, you know, but. It just it is amazing uh, how God has provided for us. Um, um, uh, I'm thinking about the bees. Uh, that started out as a conversation the summer before with Apollo, who was uh, a friend uh, of someone in our small group, and he came. He was talking about bees, and I got talking to him. We talked about an hour, I guess, and they were wondering after the fire what they could do because they started coming to the church and he calls me up and he said um, I just had a hive swarm would you be interested in a, a hive and uh, he because he said we really don't know what else to give you and I said we well, don't have to give us anything like yeah I'm interested in a hive and so all we had to do was buy the boxes and we got a fully functioning hive that um, within a few months we ended up taking up 10 pounds of honey off of, which is unheard of because usually they don't mature that quick. And uh, so God blessed us because we had been talking about it for a while. And to, to, to get something at that stage, it would be several hundred dollars. And it's just... There you go. Now, did anybody give you a cow so you could be in the land of milk and honey, or is this? <laughs> I want cows. <laughs> the farm beside us, he's he's retired, so he doesn't have cows anymore. But we get a goat. No. Get a goat. <laughs> milk of some sort. No. <laughs> um. No. Next, next time I come visit, you get a herd of goats. And <laughs> that would be funny. It would be. So <laughs> uh, we have a common friend in Zahib Nazir, and uh, I think it's been fun for the last while. That his his little saying is, you know, stay blessed, and that's been kind of our thing. But I know God's kind of taken another step for you. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that, Jason? Well, yeah, um, everybody, all, like, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people say God bless, you know, when they're done talking to somebody or whatever. If they know they're a Christian, they'll say God bless you. And you introduced me 
to that saying, and you told me about Zahib, and I met him one time when we were up, and uh, but at that point, it's like, stay blessed, and I'm like thinking, okay. So I added, well, stay blessed, be blessed, be a blessing, God bless. And then I was just come down the road, and after everything that happened, like, it's kind of like Job, we had a lot of stuff taken away, but we have way more, like, we have a, a house where each kid has their own room now. Um, we get, like, two acres of woodland, because I like woods, I don't like mowing grass. Um, there's just enough grass there that, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was thinking back to, I had mentioned earlier about the addiction, and I was a Christian when I had the addiction, and um, even through the addiction, God blessed me, and I came to this conclusion one day, and it, it, it just right out of thin air almost, except for it's not thin air because God revealed it in the sense that I'm blessed and it's not my fault. There's nothing I can do about it. God has blessed me. And, you know, it hit me like in the midst of, of a very severe addiction, God was still blessing us. And, um, no, the fire wasn't caused by that because I, I had the addiction prior to that. But, you know, it wasn't like he was trying to get my attention. Like, hey, you got to stop this. So, but, yeah, I just, I'm blessed. It's not my fault. I can't help it. I'm just going to accept it. Amen. Amen. So we're almost at the finish of our interview, and I would like to ask people if there's anything else they'd like to add. So Jason or Donna, is there anything that you'd like to add to anybody? Is there anything that's on your heart that you'd like to share? I think the hardest and the biggest blessing I got from the last few years of everything we've gone through, um, walking through the addiction and, and the fire and you know, adopting the three kids and stuff, um, sometimes it's okay to let go and let go. And I don't have to control everything. And it's okay to ask for help. Like I was mm. thinking after the fire, like God really showed me, um, I have a real problem asking for help and letting people give me things or bless me or help me do a task. Um, so God's really worked through that with me and I still struggle. Um, sometimes it's a daily, hourly thing to to ask for help from him or from other people or from my husband. Um, but it, it was that was probably one of the hardest things and the easiest things. We think it's so simple. Well, just ask somebody to help you. Hmm. Um, you know, just let somebody else do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, um, there was a point in our life and in our marriage where um, I would have to run around and double check everything. Um, you know, now I'm like, you know, I have the confidence um, to let other people do it or to trust them. Mm -hmm. Not just God, but but people. So uh, I don't know if someone needs to hear that or, <laughs> but God's laid on my heart just to, to share that, to trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be harder than anything sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Donna kind of threw something out there that uh, we didn't go into, but the kids are adopted. <laughs> we forgot that detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got we got them in the rummy still. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's that's what happens, you know. Like uh, when you adopt a child, like you forget. Like, uh, of course, my daughter's adopted, and I never think of it. And I love it when people say, wow, you guys look alike, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's good that you forgot. It's it's natural. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there, there's, there's um, uh, the, the, uh, I don't know, the Thursday nights with the, with the men's group, mm. um, which is – another connection i have to to, to hillcrest there but um 
besides Andrew was like like you said my best man. That was twenty four years, and uh, let's see, we're at nine months. So that was 20, 20, 20, 24 and a half years ago, and he's still my best man. So that that's their main connection. But the Thursday night group, uh, men's group, has been really uh, something I look forward to. It kind of uh, recharges the batteries, so to speak. But there, there's something. Uh, kind of hit me a few weeks ago, but is is you know, all the stuff that's left unsaid because uh, we could go on and on and on about how God has blessed us and the things He's done for us and, and the friends and and family that have helped us through this whole thing. Um, I mean, to the point where we just think of something and talk about it and say, oh, well, you know, uh, thinking about a ride on lawnmower. Sunday at church, fellow goes, oh, I got a ride on lawnmower. Not using, you know, if you're interested, give you a good deal on it. And we didn't ask. We just talked. And God, like, you know, it, uh, spoiler, God eavesdrops. <laughs> So, on all our conversations <laughs> he was listening he was listening yeah, yeah so there, there's all kinds of stuff that like say it's, it's going to be left on said and, and after the interview we're going to go oh why didn't I say this but we just need you know we have to talk about trusting others we just have to trust that God will use this interview uh, for his glory and for someone who may need to hear it or someone who just you know uh, says they like listening to them and I, I don't know what he'll do but I, I just have I've learned to trust God to for the things that are left on said that the things that are said will help and uh, bless somebody or encourage somebody or uh, somebody may go, wow, I, you know, I, I had one fella tell me, he said, he said, I'd be a basket case if I lost everything. I said, well, I, I didn't lose everything. And I said, I have my God, I have my family, and I have my friends, and I have my church family. I said, I didn't lose anything. Well, you lost all your stuff. I like, didn't have stuff when I started. I could build that back up. And, uh, but he wasn't a Christian. And uh, so, yeah. Hmm. Well, as we come to a close of our little time together, would you guys mind having a, a little word of prayer uh, for those watching, uh, for those who might need help in the realm of trust or just to be blessed by God or as the Spirit leads, I guess. Would you guys mind having a word of prayer for us? Uh, yeah. No? Me? Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm going to do I was going to do it anyway. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for this time together and, and uh, for the people watching at uh, Hillcrest or other other outside of Hillcrest as well. But um, just uh, ask that your hand would be upon upon them as we go through life together as, as believers. Um, we just thank you for Andrew uh, allowing us to share our story Um because we would be on familiar faces to those of Hillcrest. Uh, some may remember us. We've been there a time or two, but uh, just pray that, that somebody would be encouraged and um, lifted up and that it would encourage them most of all to seek you and that your grace and peace will be multiplied in their lives and that the, the turmoil of, of what's going on uh, in their lives, in the world, around them, within their families, that just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they, they will say, I trust God, even if the worst thing happens. And that's my prayer tonight. And also that people listening and watching would stay blessed, be blessed, be a blessing, and God bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Well, thank you guys so much for sharing your story with us. Um, everyone else, just to let you know, don't forget, church starts at 1030 on Facebook, uh, Hillcrest SJ. And we always love having the interactions there, chat-wise. And every Tuesday, we have a Bible study. And every Thursday at 2 o'clock, we have interviews like these. And uh, just as Jason was praying, we just ask that you be blessed, stay blessed, be a blessing, and just accept it. It's not your fault. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you.